espresso out of a paper cup. Not so good. Hey guys, welcome to another confusion tutorial. Now, in one of my last videos, I was showing this wavy string theory uh, thing, and some people asked me to finish this thing off. And I thought, hey, why not? It's actually so simple that a screenshot would have been probably enough. But posting a screenshot is just not cool. So let me show you how you can put something that is 2D into 3D space and make it look swell. So with that said, let's dive right into it. Hey! So probably paint a face on this thing. Okay, so um, let me play this through. Now, on the left side, this is where we left off. It might be a little bit different, but basically the same. On the right side, you see the final result. And you can see that on the right side, it looks almost like it's a 3D object, like it has some volume. Okay, and now you might ask, hey, how did you do that? How, why does it look so 3D? The answer, MB, motion blur. Now what you see here is a simple motion blur. Now the motion blur in Fusion creates only motion blur for objects that move in relation to the camera. It means if you have a texture that is animated, but the texture on which the object on which the texture is projected or mapped is not moving, it won't create motion blur. So it means this texture here that you see will not be motion blurred, but the motion blur will be applied to the plane that it's actually mapped on. That's why when you look closer at this uh, final result, you can see that in the middle, those fine strings, they still look sharp. That's because they lie right inside in the center point where the camera is orbiting around. So they would stay sharp while everything outside gets motion blur. This, for this kind of project, it kind of becomes an advantage to have uh, only motion blur for the uh, objects moving in relation to the camera. Okay, but let me show you how simple it is to create this kind of swag. Okay, so now the first thing you want to do is you want to put this thing uh, on the second monitor, on the first monitor, <laughs> this window here. You want to put this image here that we've created onto an image plane. And okay, now we have this thing in 3D, but as mentioned before, this thing is flat. It has no thickness. Next, let me drop in a renderer already. And the renderer we set to OpenGL and we activate the super sampling. We activate the lighting. We set the texturing so, uh, depth to float 16 and the image to float 16. Okay, that's for now. And next, what we need are two point lights. Okay, I drop in two of them already, and not here. Let's bring them together using a Merge 3D. So I put them together here. Okay, and make sure that this light button here is on, otherwise you won't see the light. Now, you might notice if I, that when I move the lights around, on this side is fine, but when I move the lights on the other side, you see that it doesn't affect our geometry or our object. Now, that's because we have a simple image plane, and an image plane has technically only one side, because it has no thickness. So, I can demonstrate to you by activating or displaying the normals. Now you can see that the normals face away from the lights. Okay, hence they won't get illuminated. So in order to get the illumination, we need to put the lights on the other side. And now we get this thing illuminated. I check off the normals. Okay, now we want to colorize the lights. So I make one red and the other one Maybe a blue, like this. Well, you can also play around with the uh, offset, uh, with the decay type. Um, but for now, maybe I'll leave it like that. Now, basically, the decay type is uh, endless, so it doesn't matter how this thing, how away, 
how far away this thing moves from the light, it will be always the same illumination. But with linear and quadric, especially with quadric, it becomes more real. So it means the light has to be very close to the object to get illuminated. And um, so here we can set the decay type, uh, the decay rate. So for example, let's set this to two, linear two. Okay. Now this is okay. And let's drop in the camera already. Now in this case, I won't, I won't animate the object itself, but the camera only. I want the camera to orbit around this object. And for this kind of uh, animations, it's always good to use the target. So I check the target and immediately the target pops up right in the center of the image plane. That's because I didn't change the position, the original position of the image plane. And now what we can do is we can rotate around this object very easily. And we don't even have to do it by hand. We can use an expression. Now I will sound very smart, but actually I don't really know what I'm doing here. Um, we're going to use a sign expression. I have a very strange Japanese keyboard here. That's why I'm, it doesn't match with my letters here. So sign, open parentheses, time, divide, let's say 15, and close parentheses. And I use the same down here, but this time I use a cosine. Uh, no, like this. Immediately you see the path of the camera, this red circle here. Now, if I hit play, you can see the camera is moving around there. Now, it's not perfectly uh, loopable um, because if I want to make this perfectly perfectly loopable, I also need to make the animation of the wavy strings loopable. Now, for this purpose, let's just keep it like that. I just want to show you what funny things you can do with these, those expressions here. For example, uh, if you match those two values, you will get the circular motion here. But as soon as you start uh, playing around with these values here and you actually change, make them not similar. You can see what kind of motion you get here. You see, you could also experiment with the Y. Okay, so I just copy and paste this one in here and maybe type in a 30. And now look what you got here. Now there are all kinds of things you can do here. For example, uh, I'm actually I'm actually not quite sure what this is. You can uh, add two plus, and then it will be somehow offset it. But again, I, I don't want to say anything wrong here because expressions are just not my thing. You know, um, I just to demonstrate that you can do some funny things here. Okay, and now let me show you through the camera. Now, you can create some cool motions for uh, with uh, expressions. It's uh, probably very difficult to do with uh, if you do it by hand. Okay, but okay. I don't want to sound smart here because I really don't know what this is here, uh, what it does. So let's get rid of it and let's keep it at 15. 15. Rid of a circular motion. Okay, and let's see what we get. Now the camera is a little bit too close and I'm not quite sure how to alter the expression to make the camera a little bit, to make this um, radius a little bit bigger. I uh, would appreciate if some taggy out there can help me out there. But in this case, I will just reduce the focal length so that it, yeah, is centered. And yeah, here we go. Turn on the light. And if we render this thing out now, we get something like this. Okay, now it comes. Very important. You have to switch on the motion blur here at the bottom. Switch it on, and then in the renderer, go to this tab here and check motion blur. Now it will be probably a little bit difficult to see, but as soon as I make this, uh, uh, let's, double this actually. You can see now we have motion blur and the quality of two is of course very low. Usually it's usually it starts at 32 to get a little bit cleaner. So 30, 
32 samples and yeah here we go now we get all these beautiful gradients in here and uh, unfortunately i don't uh I, I haven't found out what these horizontal lines are uh yeah unfortunately but yeah you can see now all especially here in the center when it stays sharp this makes it very interesting And now I just need to find a way how to get rid of these horizontal lines. Ah, this is basically it. Motion blur magic. Now to make this a little bit more interesting, what I did is I created another branch up here. We don't need the image plane, but we need the camera. And here in this renderer, I activate the world coordinates. And I will add a shape 3D. And this will be a sphere, a world sphere. So it needs to be big. And it needs to be transparent, 100% transparent. And in the visibility, we need to uncheck the ignore transparent pixel in auxiliary channels. That's important. Now we have this uh, world sphere, and with that we can use the, or utilize the volume fog. Okay, so for one we need the render output, and we need the 3D scene. Now in this 3D scene, I combined all things together on purpose because I also want to utilize the lights. In the volume fog, in the light tab, you can use do lighting. Okay, but first let's see what we have. This is the volume fog. I uh, will change it to sphere. In a moment, the whole volume fog covers the whole thing. That's why it's everything white. But as soon as we do lighting, bang, the lights illuminate the volume fog. And this is a very cool, very cool feature. The reason why I didn't use those lights here is because the, those two lights might be a little bit too strong so it's perhaps it's better to have a separate instance of those lights so that you can change the position a little bit or change the intensity but in this case actually uh, luckily <laughs> it actually looks pretty good um, yeah and let's put these together already so well in this case i think i can just screen it on top something like that you see, for example, it's, maybe it's a little bit too bright. Now, you could adjust this. Uh, I mean, there's so many settings here that give, will give you a totally different result. Uh, you also have noise. You know, you can use some noise here, but, but very careful. <laughs> very careful with this one. And maybe here we can just, you know, you can, you can either bring the overall gain down or in the light settings. Uh, there's so many settings here that you can play around with. Okay, transmission, asymmetry. I mean, this is very, very technical here. I mean, <laughs> there's no real explanation on what these things actually mean. Emission, of course, scattering. You can also choose the colors here. It will give you, a, can give you some interesting effects if you have more color variations in there. Now, I've never tried the noise in the volume for, for, for this project, so I don't know if it really looks uh, good or not in the animation. Yeah, maybe turn it off. Yeah, maybe something like this. Then I did some color corrections. Uh, well, this is completely up to your taste. I'm just using the one that from my last project and that was just a lookup table yeah here we go this is basically it and another thing I did was adding lens flares and um, for that you can use a light position and you can bind those lens flares to those lights and yeah 
just so many things you can do here and uh, adding more elements to this uh, wavy animation. But what, what I like so much is those variations here. You see those gradients, those beautiful variations. It's, it's just amazing and so simple, you know. But I'm sure some motion graphics genius out there, you guys can do so much better than I do here. <laughs> uh, motion graphics is just not my thing, I, I admit. Um, but uh, that's why I appreciate or respect uh, people like Don Lewis, for example. I mean, he's amazing. And um, also my Japanese coworker. Japanese are very good with motion graphics, amazing. I mean, they use all After Effects, but once they do the jump to Fusion, they might even be even cooler okay okay so I, I don't know what's left to say uh, this is basically what I did maybe one more thing uh, a guy asked me one of my patrons asked me how to use the volume fog to create volume rays like uh, God rays and now the thing is if you need some random God rays you can use the volume fog tool no question but he asked for a specific uh, God rays that emits or uh, yeah emits from a certain for, for from a special texture or something from a certain texture so you cannot use the volume fog there because it will be very complicated to, to set this up so that it really becomes actually that texture in my next tutorial I want to show you how you can use how you can create 3d God rays or even cool motion graphic elements, like, you know, like some projections. Uh, I don't know what it's called. Holograms. Yeah, but so with that said, my name is Vito. I'll see you soon. Until then, enjoy what you're doing. Damn.